guys, welcome back to Game Changers Podcast. My name is Harsh, your host. Today I have with me, my co-host Suvi and Jaden. Uh, first of all, thank you for watching. And just an initial shout out to our subscribers on YouTube, people who are liking the videos and our Patreon subscribers. If you haven't already, please uh, like and subscribe. Super stoked today because we have the one and only the gold medal winner, uh, Brady Lehman, with us today. Thanks for thanks so much for coming on, Brady. Yeah, thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. Awesome. And, you know, for, for people that don't know you, Brady, obviously I think most Canadians do know you. I think you've done so much for the country in terms of representation and in your sport. But I'd love for you to give, the, give, your, give them a little introduction about yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Brady Lehman. I'm a ski cross racer. Um, I won the Olympics in 2010, or sorry, 2018. <laughs> uh, 2018 <laughs> Olympic champion. That'd be um, nice, 20, eh? Just two, yeah, one. that would have been good. I wish I got that one. <laughs> uh, 2018 Olympic champion, 2016 X Games champion, um, 2019 World Championship silver medalist. Uh, been pretty fortunate to have some good success uh, in my ski cross career for sure. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, we're excited as we get into this podcast, we're going to delve deeper in, you know, what crafted that success and, you know, sharing your journey and that process on how you got that gold medal. But, you know, just to start off with, you know, for this season, our theme being inspired through isolation for Game Changers podcast. I just want to know you, you know, you're, you're a champion, you know, what's, what is a champion doing to stay inspired through isolation at this moment? Yeah, I've just been, um, the the first thing I did, isolation started, my ski season got cut short a little bit. I lost a couple events. So um, I really came home and, and the first step for me was honestly just to enjoy a little bit of a break. <laughs> like this is the longest that I've spent under the same roof in five, six, seven plus years. So uh, like consecutive nights under the same roof. So I really just enjoyed a little bit of time at home and then uh, from there, I started just to figure out little ways here and there that I can etch out uh, pieces of training or ways to get better as an athlete. So I'm lucky I've got a little bit of a setup here at home, nothing too crazy, but like a spin bike and some little weights and stuff like that. And just been really putting in lots of miles on the bike and trying to do everything that I can to make sure that I'm primed for whenever it is that I can get back in the gym and get back to training. So just little bits here and there each day and, and reminding myself what the big goal is. And for me right now, that's just making sure that whenever I can get back to training full time, that uh, my body and my mind are in a pretty good place. So trying to take 10, 10 minutes every day to think about that and makes things a little easier. For sure. And I think it might reminds me of someone, you know, we had on the podcast earlier about, you know, in, it's kind of like being kinder to your future self obviously with you you're planning on competing in the in other olympics the 2022 in china so you know you have to stay in that mindset obviously it's another two years from now but you you kind of can't you know take actions or take decisions based on the now you kind of have to prepare in advance because you know you're competing against the top top athletes in the world yeah, it's a long road ahead, looking ahead to the next Olympics. But um, if there's one thing that I know from all of my past Olympic experiences, it's that every little bit counts. It's those little day-to-day -day decisions that add up over time to be the difference maker when it really counts. 100%, 100%. So walk us through that. Uh, you know, obviously we talked a little about, it, you know, an introduction of who you are, but uh, walk us through that uh, that win that you had. You know, t tell us about what that uh, what that win was like for you. Obviously, you you know everyone saw you on TV, uh, you know, with your gold medal on. So, but you know, what's obviously we're gonna dive deeper into the journey behind it. But tell us about that moment and what it was like for you. Yeah, the moment. Oh man, it was crazy. Like it was just so surreal. Um, Honestly, like the first thing I did was breathe a huge sigh of relief. <laughs> like after everything that kind of went on to get there. And, uh, but yeah, it was just uh, so crazy. It's one of those things. It's one of those moments. Like I worked my whole life for that. I dreamt about it a million times and I work 
every day and I train so hard knowing full well that that might never happen. And it probably, you know, I, going into that, I thought there's part of me that knew I could do it, but at the same time, you have to be willing for that to never actually come true. And then all of a sudden it does actually happen. And it was just trying not to cry on TV and just really <laughs> try and soak it all in. Like <laughs> The tears of joy or tears of just relief, you know, yeah. like it's done, just got it done. Yeah, I was pretty lucky because it was like nice and sunny, so I had my full mirrored goggle lens in, so nobody could see what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, for sure. And obviously, there's so many years of hard work and you know sacrifice and fail, like just you know, just so many losses and even some wins. Uh, it's just a uh, just uh, an accumulation of all those events and it's all in one moment where you really feel like it all paid off. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. It was big time payoff for a lot of years of hard work and sacrifice and um, to do it on a stage like the Olympic games is just, it was totally a dream come true. And all of a sudden, like kind of the scope of everything hits you all at once. And then that happens like another couple hundred times after the, events actually over because it just keeps rolling like the momentum from that win you realize it really is just so different from any other competition Mm -hmm. for sure so uh brady you've been skiing your whole life right like tell us how you got started and kind of um what inspired you yeah, well, I don't really remember starting to ski. It's always been a part of my life. Um, I'm yeah. pretty lucky. Both my parents worked in the ski industry when I was a kid. So uh, I'm told I was like two years old and they basically just plot me in ski boots when I could stand up and the way I went. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it's always been a huge, a huge aspect of my life. Like I basically got to grow up on the ski hills outside of Calgary. Uh, with my mom working at a couple of the ones really close to the city. So uh, I just, I loved the sport. And and when I was a kid, I wasn't super fast. Ever the fastest kid. I had some talent, but I was like, I wasn't winning races. I was kind of, if I got a ninth or 10th place ribbon, I was pretty stoked when I was a little guy. So, (laughs) um, but like, I just, I loved skiing with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, like it, so. I was, uh, yeah. I loved, I loved skiing with my friends, and I loved just being on skis, and I liked racing. Um, but I, I just really loved more being out on the hill and, and racing around with my buddies, and that passion kind of drove me through the years where I wasn't super fast, and eventually I kind of started to find my stride a little bit. I was like a bit of a late bloomer for sure, so I was a couple years behind a lot of kids my age in terms of size and strength and stuff like that and there's a big difference in ski racing when you kind of hit those teen years yeah but eventually kind of found my way in alpine racing uh for for most of my youth i was on the alpine team um alpine ski ski clubs Uh, i was on the Alberta ski team for three years for Alpine racing. I was with the Canadian development team for a year before I moved to ski cross. So um, yeah, I was lucky to kind of be able to turn just a love of the sport and have that like kind of bridge into actually getting good at it because I wasn't very good as a kid, but I uh, still loved it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know like after you you got your, you know, Alpine, after you made the team, you made that switch to ski cross and obviously you had, you know, your first Olympics in 2010, you know, but uh, unfortunately that got cut short and, you know, being, getting injured the day before. Right. So I guess even that experience and obviously the 2014 experience as well. Uh, I'd love to hear, you know, what you, what did you learn from those experiences? Because it's those are some tough pills to swallow in terms of, you know, the amount of effort you put in and the result that came out of it. Yeah, for sure. Going into the Vancouver Olympics in 2010, I had only been raising ski cross for about a year and a half um, and ended up crashing the day before the event and breaking my leg. So didn't get to compete, watch the event from the stands with my parents um, and really just had to take that whole recovery process and especially the moments like while I was watching that event to uh, to kind of weigh some of the worst consequences sitting there with a broken leg 
but at the same time kind of experiencing uh, the Olympics in a di different way, watching my teammates compete and succeed and fail on the Olympic stage. And I really, in the end, once kind of the dust settled from that injury, I found it really motivating. Like it was, uh, even though it was a crushing defeat at the time, just being that close to an, to an Olympic experience of my own, um, just really solidified that that was something that I wanted to work towards and something that I wanted to achieve in my life. So uh, as disappointing as that was, it, it really stoked the fire for my run um, into Sochi. And once I came back from my broken leg after Vancouver, I really started to find some speed on the hill. That's when I started finding the podium on the World Cup a little bit more. And um, I went into Sochi uh, ranked in the top three in the world I was skiing really fast and and I finished fourth there at the Olympics and um, for a long time that really felt like like a defeat like you're I was so close to a medal and you kind of taste it and um, and it felt like I kind of let it slip through my fingers but at the same time it was an amazing experience and I was so proud to actually compete in Olympic games and represent Canada and show that you know, even though I didn't come home with a medal, it was still a great performance. And I was pretty proud of that. So um, to have that experience under my belt was was great. And I felt like going into Korea, that just it really gave me nothing to lose. Like, I had had so much fun at the Russia Olympics. And despite not winning a medal, um, had so many amazing experiences there with with Team Canada and with my family and everything. And that really motivated me to try to get back to an Olympics just to experience everything that goes along with that. And at the same time, I knew that I had what it took to compete for a medal. So I just did everything that I could to give myself a shot for that again. And, and yeah, luckily it totally worked out. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, do you think uh, like though, obviously those, the 2010 and the 2014, do you think, Maybe, obviously, you at that moment, yeah, you really felt a lot of um, disappointment. But do you think they really contributed towards, you know, that fire, that, you know, that uh, desire to really get a medal and really pushing you beyond this, you know, really? Because I know how that winner's mindset is because, you know, obviously, when you're an athlete, no one likes to lose. And getting getting that close is is really tough. So I feel like that must have really, obviously those failures must have contributed to that big win that you had later on. Yeah, for sure. Um, in a way, those disappointments gave me a little bit of confidence because there's so many different things that can go wrong in a ski race, especially in a ski cross race where you've got three other people on the hill with you and you can't control what they do. You can't control the weather. You can't control all these different things. But like having been there at the Olympics and having these things go wrong and, and still being able to put a spin on it did put a positive spin on it gave me some confidence and I knew that like no matter what at least I wasn't going to make the same mistakes over again <laughs> um, so I had that and then at the same time yeah just knowing that that no matter what you do you you've put everything that you that you have into this performance at the Olympics that comes around once every four years so and having that not gone exactly to plan a couple times um, it was definitely comforting to know that there is um, a, a, a really amazing feeling of pride uh, just knowing how hard you work to get there no matter what the outcome is um, and having those two kind of like I guess not fail well yeah failures like two two attempts that didn't go the way that I wanted to behind me I knew that no matter what if I kept working at what I was doing that the effort was there the work on the front end was there no matter what the result was it was still going to be a win in in one way or another um, even if there was no medal attached to it that's great um, did you have kind of a breakthrough moment when you were younger or even like recently where you realized you wanted to pursue skiing, skiing professionally? Um, I, you know, I never had like this big aha moment where I just knew I wanted to be a ski racer. Mm -hmm. I knew um, when I was a kid, I knew I just, I really wanted to go to the Olympics. That was always a huge dream of mine. I remember 
Uh, my mom worked at Can Olympic Park here in Calgary, and um, they have they used to have this old like kind of museum hall of fame thing from the 1988 Olympics yeah. and it had this big theater in it. And I remember as a kid, like I would just go through this museum, the hall of fame, like over and over again every day when I was there, just cause I love to look at the Olympic memorabilia stuff. And they had this video that like that played on repeat mm -hmm. and there was a scene, like a whole bunch of scenes from all kinds of different sports uh, at the 88 games but there was scenes from the opening and closing ceremonies and just the look on the athletes faces especially the Canadian athletes in this video it just looked like so much fun uh, to be a part of the Olympic <laughs> team and to experience all that so I remember thinking not necessarily about um, about kind of competing and, and being in the moment of the competition but more about being in the closing and opening and closing ceremonies with Team Canada. Uh, I remember, yeah, I really imagining myself doing that. And that kind of, that dream kind of grew from, from those moments as a little kid in that theater. Mm -hmm. it really just came from a passion for skiing. Yeah, for sure. Like I was lucky that, that I had this sport and I was lucky I had an opportunity to try all kinds of different sports when I was a kid. I, I ski raced and I played soccer to a pretty high level and I got to try ski jumping and luge and speed skating and all these other sports that we have because of the Olympic legacy here in Calgary. So it was pretty cool. And then to just kind of slowly work my way up in the ranks of, of ski racing um, to have the sport that I love the most be the one that I actually was good at was, was pretty fortunate for me. <laughs> Yeah. So to have your skill level, you've obviously dedicated a large chunk of your life to skiing. Um, is there anything outside of skiing, like goals wise, that you'd like to accomplish? Um, yeah, I, like I'm still I'm still working on the next step for me after ski racing is a big one that's kind of looming pretty large right now, like in 33 and going to try to go to one more Olympics and, and that'll probably be it for the ski career. Mm -hmm hoping my knees and everything body stays in one piece till then but <laughs> um, another gold <laughs> yeah 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 that would be amazing um, <laughs> but yeah I'm just right now I'm definitely focused on just trying to enjoy it as much as I can like I'm literally living my dream right now so I work uh off the hill as much as I can and really just uh yeah, do everything I can to make sure I give myself another chance at the next Olympics, but that I can enjoy the last couple of years of, of my ski racing career. Uh, definitely a big, a big one for me, a big goal outside of, of my own athletic aspirations is just doing what I can to kind of give back to the ski racing community in Alberta and, mm -hmm. and inspire uh, the kids to kind of keep going. Like I was, um, it's a little on the cliche side, but like I said, I was that kid that wasn't really, you know, I wasn't fast. I wasn't winning medals. I was you know, stoked to get 10th place or ninth place. And um, I really think that there's a big benefit in keeping kids like that involved in sport. Kids who really love it and, and have a passion for it. And I think you learn so many amazing life lessons that contribute to all areas of your life through sport. So really just hoping to do what I can to, to leave a little bit of a positive legacy on the sport world in Alberta and especially the ski world. In Alberta. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious, what was going through your mind uh, in 2018 that led to the victory? Yeah, so that was pretty funny. Like I remember pretty clearly going up, um, they take us up on snowmobiles between the runs. And so you're sitting on the back of the snowmobile and I've, got my race skis there and I'm going up and I was getting like pretty nervous um getting ready to go but I remember getting back up to the start and having a little bit of a hold before we got to go for our final race run um and I thought to myself like wow I made back-to-back -back Olympic finals like that's kind of a that was a big accomplishment in itself nobody in my sports ever made back-to-back -back Olympic finals um and then I kind of realized, you know, I was here four years ago. I was in, in the big final in Russia. And I looked at the three other guys 
that were in the Stargate with me. And I thought these guys, there was a, a couple of them that it was their first Olympics and they were in the final. And I thought, you know what, I've been here before. These guys have never been here before. So no matter how nervous I am, they're mm -hmm. way more nervous than me. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely made me like chill out a little bit. And, and I was able to just remind myself that one of the big, uh, like one of the big focuses that, that I had for the Korea Olympics was just to enjoy every moment and enjoy the pressure and enjoy the competition. And so I reminded myself that, that you, even though I was nervous, that this was some, the moment to be enjoyed and it was in the starting gate. And so I was sitting there like with a, with a pretty nervous smile on my face, but a smile nonetheless. And I was just going, you know what, just go out and ski and enjoy it. And, and whatever happens, happens. But, um, you have to take all that pressure and, and everything as a, as a positive and as something that's fun because that's what you've been working towards. And if you let it just get you down, then it's going to be a lousy result again. <laughs> yeah. Um, how are you planning to approach the next Olympics? Yeah, for sure. In the same way, like the next Olympics will almost certainly be my last uh, as a ski racer. So I'll just be trying to enjoy the whole process of going to the games as much as I can. Um, being part of Team Canada on the Olympic team is such an amazing time. Uh, the Canadian Olympic Committee does a really good job of fostering a team spirit across all of the different sports. And there's a bunch of people that have been through a few Olympic cycles together. So I have some great friends in some other sports. and. Um, getting to be a part of an Olympics in a different country and experience some different culture and meet people from all over the world. And so I'll just be really trying to soak it all in. It'll be cool. Cause I'm competing now with, with a different kind of pressure, I guess, like um, there's not the pressure of, of what happens if you never get an Olympic medal. Now it's trying to defend an Olympic medal. So a little bit different, but I think a little bit uh, easier to manage for sure. Um, with a lot of success on World Cup, it always seemed like I needed that big event medal, that Olympics or World Championship medal, but especially Olympics, like it's a career defining moment. So fortunately that box is ticked and I can just go and enjoy the next one and, <laughs> and see if I can do it again. Yeah, uh, do you have any uh, tips for anyone that's pursuing uh, skiing or any other winter sport as a career and that wants to go pro? Yeah, I mean, my biggest, my bi the biggest tip for me has always been to remind yourself why you're doing it. Um, I remind myself at every race that, that the result and, um, you know, the medals aren't, necessarily why I'm there of course I want to win everyone wants to win like that's a that's a given that's why you compete um that's not what sets me apart from the other competitors like the stuff that sets me apart from my, the other competitors is my passion for the sport and, and the values of of fun and grit and and competitiveness that I represent on the hill those are the difference makers for me so I think a good thing for, for athletes that are trying to make it is to just remind yourself and, and really set that, like what, what values and, and what traits set you, set you apart from your competition because everybody wants to win. That's not a, to me, that's not a good enough, a good enough reason to compete. And the people, oh, yeah, he wanted it more. Well, I like, I don't know. I don't really buy that stuff. Like, there's, I think there's something else behind it a lot of times. And those reasons behind the result are, are normally the difference makers, uh, in my own experience. Fantastic. So, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, what, what kind of values were really important in your success? Because, you know, like you said, uh, obviously hard work and talent is really important in any mm -hmm. in, in, in sports but you said you know these values these personal values really have a huge impact on how you really perform in the sport so what kind of personal values really helped you you know become successful that you know that you had to develop over time you know that really allowed you to be, to be successful in this career 
Yeah, for me, like a, a big one for me is is grit or determination, um, where I've just always felt like, you know, I've been on this path and this is something that I've that I've set my mind to do it and I'm not going to let things like injuries or, you know, poor results or this or that, like set me back. I'm always willing to find a way to figure out a way or work around these different setbacks. Um, consistency and, and competitiveness has been a big one. Like I want to be, I make sure I do everything I can to be viewed as someone who is a competitor week in, week out and in everything that I do. Um, that's a big one for me, especially in ski cross. It's so hard to find that consistent competitiveness. So making sure that I'm there every week um, towards the top of the result list is huge. Uh, like sportsmanship is a big one for me. I want to be the guy at the top that you're scared to race, but that you know is going to be your friend in the finish line at the end of the day. So um, like those ones are big ones for me, like being a fair competitive competitor, but a tough competitor. Um, these are ways that I view myself and that I hope my competitors view me as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. And you know, on a, on a personal side, I'm just curious to see uh, if you have that medal with you, if you could just take a look quickly, if you have it with you. Oh yeah, I mean I have it upstairs. If you want to give me a sec, I can go grab it. Yeah, sure. We'd love to see it. 100%. Yeah, sure. Just give me two seconds. So the weather. And, you know, obviously with this little break, um, I'm going to take two seconds to say, hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying isolated with your families and maintaining good health. And, yeah, and uh, Brady's back. So let's see this. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I got it here. It comes in this pretty cool okay. wooden box. This is our metal cam yeah. that we have. There she <laughs> is. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> How heavy is that? It's heavier than you think. <laughs> <laughs> they uh that's really cool, yeah. So I guess they they seem to get like every series of Olympic medals seems to be heavier than the last. And that's mm. like a big thing, I guess, when they talk to athletes, what you want is that moment when they first put it around your neck it needs to have like a little bit of half to it because that weight represents for the most part, like a lifetime of work to get to get to that moment. So it is pretty cool. And then also when you have it in your pocket at the bar, it's really heavy. So, you know, if you drop it, like, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. it's easy to tell if it's like falling out of your pocket or this is this is our second medal we've had on we actually had another um a, another sprinter who shared his bronze medal from you know the rio olympics from 2014 so yeah. it's great you know these metal cams co keep coming in you know we keep sharing these medals with our viewers and uh, it's exciting for us to see because we've never really seen these medals up close and personal like this so i think it's fantastic but, you know, as we move towards uh, a close for a podcast today, um, you know, we always ask one question for every guest where, you know, what uh, describes, um, you know, being a game changer for you in one word, if you could have to describe that allows you to be a game changer in your career. One word for me would just be passion for sure. Like I love my sport. I love skiing. I have a huge passion for for everything that that's involved with being a high level ski racer, the competitiveness and, and, and the sport aspect and the pressure, all of that. But the biggest driving factor behind that for me is just a passion. Mm -hmm. And it gives you that little extra layer of motivation that you need. Like you said, you know, on our call, the, the little extra layer of motivation you need behind just a layer of success, right? Yeah, for sure. Sure, I think um, the, a big thing behind 
anyone who has success at something that takes so much work is just that they absolutely love what they do. Um, and you have to love the work aspect of it and the competition aspect of it. And you have to love the highs and lows and everything that's involved in it. So um, if you don't have that passion to bring you through those low moments and get you back on top, then, then it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, thank you so much for coming on. I think it was fantastic um, learning about, you know, the, the cool story you had to share, especially your journey, you know, um, it's a, it was a long one, but it seemed like it was one that was worthwhile with you coming out uh, at the end with a gold medal around your neck. So uh, thanks so much for coming on. You know, I just want to give you a quick minute to maybe share your social media where people can find you, whoever's listening. Yeah, um, Lehman Racing on Instagram, um, Bray Lehman on Facebook. That's about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> get in touch um, always answer any messages or anything like that that I get so I'd love to hear from people and um, yeah thanks for having me it was great for sure awesome and if Suvi and Jade have some closing remarks remarks to share no, it was really inspiring to hear your story and I'm sure our viewers feel the same way that yeah, was awesome to meet you all right Brady well thank yeah, you so much for coming lot, on guys. that was a blast and thank you uh, for sharing your story. It was awesome. Thanks so much. And thank you guys again for listening. Um, you know, it's another podcast. Hoping you guys are staying safe, um, staying motivated, staying inspiration, staying inspired. Uh, we're going to try to do our best to keep bringing you stories like these. And we'll see you on the next one. See you guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. All right, Brady. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thank you.